Happy Friday, everyone! It's Dr. Bridget Young from babyformulaexpert.com here on another very glamorous Friday to talk to you about hypoallergenic formulas. Um, I have done a previous happy hour sort of about this topic. In my previous happy hour, I explained why hypoallergenic formulas smell so awful <laughs> and techniques that you can use Oh, here's Vaughn's back to play with the tripod. Techniques that you can use to um, try to get your baby over the aversion if you do indeed need one. Today, we are gonna answer a question that I've actually got this question from several different parents over email, so I'm doing a happy hour so I can send them the link. Um, I've had several people ask me to compare the different options for hypoallergenic formulas in the US. So that's what we're gonna do today. Um, it's not too bad because there's not that many options if you're in the US. So first I wanna give you a little bit of science nerd background about what makes a hypoallergenic formula hypoallergenic because sometimes there's confusion on, even amongst pediatricians about when a baby truly needs a hypoallergenic formula. So I want you to know um, if your baby truly needs one because if they don't, it opens up a lot more options for you. So um, a hypoallergenic formula is just like it sounds. Um, it is not going to elicit any allergic responses. The reason it's not going to is because all of the proteins in the formula are so small that they won't cause any antibodies or other pieces of an allergic reaction to bind to them. So if you think about, I'm trying to think of an example. Like if you have celiac disease, right? You develop an antibody to a celiac protein, which is, you know, a kind of big molecular structure. Um, or if you are allergic to, I'm allergic to cats, and it's actually cat dander is a protein, and when that protein is exposed to one of my membranes, um, my body recognizes it, and you know my histamines go crazy, and I get red eyes. However, so if you feed your baby only very tiny proteins, they're not big enough for your body to you know recognize them as any sort of threat, and so no allergic reaction can occur. The reason that we don't feed all babies this formula is, um, you know, normal healthy babies are made to digest relatively small, medium-sized dish proteins that are in breast milk. So um, to give you an example, let's see, an intact protein, I had to write this down for myself, um, the type of protein that's in um, formula from that is just intact from cow's milk. Um, ranges anywhere from a size of 14 to 67. The units is a kilodalton. If you are a nerd, you know this is K, capital D, little a. Um, the units don't really matter, just the number 14 to 67. So there's tons of different proteins that range in size around there. A fully hydrolyzed formula, which is usually hypoallergenic, the size is three or less. So we're talking real small. Um, the, the next step down is a pure amino acid formula. And so that's just one, a kilodalton is roughly one amino acid. So those are for like babies with pretty severe digestive or truly metabolic disorders. Um, like pure, what's one called, like pure amino, anyway. If you have anywhere near a um, healthy baby, you don't need a pure amino acid formula. A hypoallergenic formula, like I said, is fully hydrolyzed, which means the size of the proteins is three or less, so the body can't, um, can't um, amount an immune response to any of those proteins. Oh, so fabulous at the end of the week. So now that you know exactly what makes a formula hypoallergenic, let's go over your options if you live in the US. You've only got three, and then I threw in a European formula because it seems super popular and people always ask about it. The two you've heard of the most that your doctor most likely brought up if you need a hypoallergenic formula are Nutramigen and Alimentum. Now, let me back up for a second because I wanna say, I think this is a personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. I think a lot of babies end up on hypoallergenic formulas that don't need to be on hypoallergenic formulas. I think there's a tendency among some pediatricians who may not fully understand um, the degree of formula hydrolysis to jump to a hypoallergenic formula when the baby shows any sign of intolerance to their current formula. I think so. I think some pediatricians jump to the hypoallergenic choice a little too quickly, in my personal opinion, which is why I wanted to educate you about what 
is a hypoallergenic formula and who needs it. You need a hypoallergenic formula if you have been tested, your child has been tested for a cow or dairy allergy, like a skin prick test, a blood test, like a, a legit test from an allergist or an immunologist and they were positive. Then they need to be on a hypoallergenic formula, like legit yesterday. If you didn't have that and your doctor just thinks your baby may have a dairy sensitivity or allergy, they may need it, they may not, explore that conversation with your doctor and I'll leave it there. So now for the parents who know their baby needs to be on a hypoallergenic formula, here are your choices. Um, Enfamil's version, every, the three main brands, Enfamil, Similac, and Gerber all have one. So Enfamil's is Nutramagen and I'm gonna go over kind of the big points about each so that you can make your own decision. The biggest thing that differs between all of them is the source of the protein. So remember, all of them are fully hydrolyzed, meaning the size of the protein is eensy beansy small. Um, Nutramagen, the original protein source is casein. So remember, cow's milk proteins all fall into one or two categories, either whey proteins or casein proteins. Um, so and, or, Nutramagen takes just the casein proteins and chops them up real tiny. Um, the carbohydrate in Nutramagen is corn syrup. You can come on in. My husband's walking through. It's looking so good. <laughs> um, so the carbohydrate is corn syrup. There's no added lactose. I'm going to step aside for a second. I explained in my other one that you, it's, there is no such thing as a U.S. fully hydrolyzed hypoallergenic formula that contains just lactose. This is usually because the hydrolyzed proteins have this funk odor to them that you're very familiar with. And so the corn sugar or some kind of other sugar is in there to make it a little sweeter. So it's more appealing to the babies to make it try to taste a little bit more like breast milk. So the carbohydrates all corn syrup. Um, it has A, R, A, and D, H, A. All of the American brands do, so I won't dwell on that too much. It has no probiotic. It has no prebiotic. Um, and then the fat blend, I actually do sort of care about in a partially hydrolyzed formula, or a fully hydrolyzed formula, excuse me. Um, because babies who need fully hydrolyzed formulas are usually very sensitive. So I just like to pay attention. Um, the fat blend in this does contain palm oil, which usually I avoid talking about because very few babies are sensitive to it. The baby that is sensitive to palm oil might be the one that needs a hypoallergenic formula, so I just throw that out there. Nutramagen does have palm oil, um, and then it does have coconut oil, um, which is very easily absorbed, so I do like to see that. So that's Nutramagen in a nutshell. Let's compare that to Similax hypoallergenic formula, which is Alimentum. It's very similar to Nutramagen in that the protein source is pure casein, chopped up real small, fully hydrolyzed. Um, the carbohydrate source is corn maltodextrin as opposed to corn syrup. I explained the difference between these two on a blog. Basically, they're very similar. Um, you can think about them similarly, I think, if I'm glossing over the minor differences. Um, and alimentum also has sugar or sucrose as um, a component of the carbohydrate. Their fat blend contains no palm oil, um, and it's really your only option in the U.S. for a hypoallergenic formula without palm oil. So that's a big difference if you end up thinking that palm oil is a concern for your baby. Alimentum is a clear choice for you. Um, it also has, uh, it doesn't have coconut oil, but it has medium chain triglycerides, which are the component of coconut oil that's easily absorbed. So basically the fat blend is very gentle and very easily absorbed, like most all fat. Um, let's see the other differences. No probiotic, no prebiotic. Okay, let's con. This is, I'm throwing a lot at you. You guys are doing awesome for those of you who are still with me. This is real hardcore nerd stuff. Um, let's contrast that to your third option in the US is your Gerber Extensive um, HA. What does the HA stand for? It stands for hydrolyzed. I forget what the A stands for. Anyway. Um, Gerber Extensive HA is Gerber's hypoallergenic formula, and it does have some big differences. Um, their protein source is 100% whey, the other component of cow's milk, so no casein, uh, but then fully hydrolyzed. I know you're going to ask, which is better, whey or casein? Um, I do have firm opinions about this if the protein is intact. 
However, these proteins are chopped up so small, I don't know if it makes a huge difference. Like it, it's not enough for me to recommend start with this one. It is nice that you have the option. So if you start with a casein-based hypoallergenic formula and it goes horribly, you can try the whey or vice versa. Um, but I don't think one is innately better than the other, again, because the, all the proteins are chopped up so small to begin with. So the Gerber's is a whey-based, fully hydrolyzed. The carbohydrate source is corn maltodextrin, similar to the Similac, except Gerber has no sucrose or sugar. So it's all corn maltodextrin. And their fat blend, um, did I have on here? Oh, I'm sorry, I misspoke earlier, I'm so sorry. Their flat fat blend also has no palm oil and does have medium chain triglycerides. I feel so bad I gave you wrong information earlier. So um, very similar to the Similac. So um, again, a very gentle starting, no palm oil, which is a potential irritant for a very, very minor um, portion of the infant population. Does have ARIDHA like everything else. Um, no prebiotic. It does have a probiotic. It's the only U.S. hypoallergenic formula that comes with a probiotic added. Um, and it's Bifidobacteria lactis, which is a lovely probiotic that's very common in breastfed babies' guts. So good to go there. Um, Gerber's hypoallergenic formula does have nucleotides in it. The other two do not. I'm not going to say much more. It doesn't make or make, make or break my decision either way. It's very rare your baby would have a negative reaction to nucleotides, like super rare. Um, but again, once your baby's on a hypoallergenic formula, you know they're sensitive. So it's nice to know that you have options. The other two have no nucleotides. Gerber does. Um, Gerber and Similac have no palm oil. Enfamil does. Gerber is whey-based, Enfamil and Similac are casein-based. So you have this nice um, option and scientific way of going about trying to figure out what's upsetting your baby. I'm going to end by comparing to a very popular European hypoallergenic formula, and this is HIP. So H, little i, capital P, capital P. Um, it's a German-based formula that seems to be very popular that's imported into the U.S., so their hypoallergenic formula is called HIP Hypoallergenic HA, um, and they have different stages. I'm going to go with stage one. They're all the basis is pretty similar. Um, before I go into the ingredients, I need to give several disclaimers. One, it is really hard for me to find accurate sources of information about non-U.S. formulas. I cannot find ingredients on the HIP website. Um, so the ingredients I have are from a secondary uh, sourcer of this formula, so I don't know if they're accurate. The other thing is, I know some European formulas are manufactured in several different locations in the EU, and the ingredients differ depending on which location they are made. So just in general, if you decide to import a formula that's not made in the US, you need to be in charge of checking the ingredients and knowing that you're feeding your baby what you think you're feeding your baby. Um, because I know that this one comes and the label's all in German, and I don't speak German. So I have this translation that I found on this website that I think is accurate. Um, I don't know, to be honest. Um, so what's it look like? HIP is hypoallergenic because it is fully hydrolyzed and the protein source is whey. So the protein source is identical to Gerber. So it's most similar to the Gerber hypoallergenic formula if you're comparing it to U.S. brands. The biggest difference with the HIP is that HIP is lactose-based. On the ingredients, I cannot see any other sugar added, so no corn syrup, corn maltodextrin, sucrose, which in general I usually think is a great thing. Um, I really wonder how bad this tastes. Has anyone tried it? It's kind of expensive. I don't want to pay to import it just to try it, but I'm dying to know if it tastes horrible. So if you have tried it or smelled it, please tell me. So Pro, it has, um, it's lactose, so it has no uh, non-breast milk based sugars. Again, if you have a sensitive baby that needs a hypoallergenic formula, watch my happy hour about baby lactose quote unquote intolerance. If it's a newborn and they're having a lot of digestive issues, especially if the baby was born prematurely, um, 
They may have issues digesting a lot of lactose, and so a lactose-reduced formula or formula with a little bit of corn sugar added might be better tolerated by your baby when they're very, very young. So um, and if that's the case, HIP is not a good choice. Just keep these in mind. Again, it's just always nice to have options. So HIP, biggest difference. Um, the carbohydrate is much more natural, as in much more looks like breast milk. In general, I love that. They're vegetable, and then they just, on the label, say vegetable oils. I have no idea what the blend is, so I can't tell you if it has medium chain triglycerides, palm oil. I, I couldn't find that information, I'm sorry. Um, it is has a prebiotic, so it is the only one of the ones I've discussed that has a prebiotic. It also has a probiotic. Um, their probiotic, from what I can find, is lactobacillus fermentum, within with a number, meaning it's a proprietary uh, bug, basically. It's probably fine. I'm sure it's fine. They went through the, pro the trouble of getting it trademarked. So um, they probably did safety testing. It's not a strain I see in medical research often, um, like Bifidobacteria lactis, which people talk about a lot um, as a very common strain in breastfed infants. So it's probably not going to hurt your baby. Um, it's not one that I'm most comfortable with. It is nice to have a probiotic, so kind of just weigh the pros and cons. So that's the summary. Awesome carbohydrate source, whey protein hydrolysis, fully hydrolyzed, no nucleotides like Similac and Enfamil, um, does have a prebiotic, the only one that does, does have a probiotic like Gerber. And then the other thing is it is a different source of ARA and DHA. So I also did a happy hour about single cell oil sources of DHA and ARA. Um, the source of DHA and ARA in HIP is from a mix of vegetable and fish oils, which is, yes, technically a little bit more natural. Um, the reason we don't have that in the U.S. is basically the FDA. There's a very long process of getting in ingredients approved by the FDA for use in infant formula for good reason. We want to be sure everything that goes into infant formula is extremely safe. Um, so at this time, there's no... U.S. formulas that use a fish oil source as the DHA and ARA. So that is different between these two, or between HIP and all the U.S., that um, HIP uses a fish oil source of ARA and DHA, whereas all the U.S. hypoallergenic formulas do use the single cell oil, um, which one, so the one ARA and DHA, one comes from a oil extracted from a fungus and one comes from an oil extracted from a fermented algae. Okay, and then the hip is also fully non-GMO, whereas I don't believe any of the other three make that claim so far. However, I have noticed that at least Gerber um, is starting to put the non-GMO label on each of their formula lines slowly, so I anticipate this coming, but at the moment, none of these three hypoallergenic formulas in the U.S sport the non-GMO label. But again, I anticipate that that's coming. So that was a crap load of information. If your little one is on a hypoallergenic formula, let me end by saying, I'm sorry. I know it's a really hard road to travel, to, to get your baby tested, find out they got a, a dairy allergy, go through all these horrible smelling formulas, pay so much money. Oh my God, they're so expensive. Um, your baby will outgrow it. You will get past this. <laughs> you have my sympathy. <laughs> um, and I hope that all of that information was helpful. I'll try to do a more comprehensive um, write-up and put it on the blog so that you have a written resource to go to, especially since I fumbled over some of the information there. Um, if you know you got a girlfriend whose baby's stuck on a hypoallergenic formula or she's struggling to find one that works, share this video um, with those parents and hopefully hopefully we can get the right information to the right people. Um, share this with your pediatrician if you guys are having a conversation about do you need a hypoallergenic formula versus perhaps just a partially hydrolyzed formula. Um, and then if you have any other questions or topics you'd like me to tackle in a future happy hour, let me know. Well, happy hour is late tonight, so it is like legit my bedtime in 30 minutes. The, I hear the children are awake and it is their bedtime in five minutes. So I gotta go. Um, it was lovely to see you. I'll end with a cheers.
Have a wonderful weekend and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.